I do not accept the doctrine of faith alone. I affirm faith first because that's what the scriptures teach. Faith first, works follow. Faith first, obedience follows. It's not faith alone. If you have faith alone and you never obey, that's not real faith. That is not, that is as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. It's a super important concept to understand. It's faith first, not faith alone. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Notice the order of operations here. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Now, everybody always reads those two verses. They don't read verse 10. But see, the first two verses are all about grace being a free gift. It's given. You don't work for it. This is all true. You have faith in Jesus' name and you receive salvation. But if you have really received salvation and if Jesus... Yeshua is truly your Lord, then you will do verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What that means is, verse 8 and 9, the faith comes alive and salvation is received. Verse 10 is the seal and the sign and the proof that that salvation is legitimate. A person does the good works God has commanded of them to do. It is the word of God. Stop letting your pastor read you only two of the three verses. It's not faith alone. A faith alone Bible would have only verses 8 and 9. But a faith first, the true Bible, has verses 8, 9, and 10. We are saved by grace through faith. It is not from ourselves. It is a gift. It is not by works. No one can boast, but we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. If Jesus is truly your Lord, you will do what he says. You are saved by faith. God forgives you of your sins by believing in Jesus Christ. But if that belief is sincere, it will result over time in greater and greater obedience to what Jesus has commanded. What you trust results in what you do. If you're trusting self, you won't do what the Bible says. And that indicates that you might not actually be saved. I want you to be saved. So tonight I have preached to you the whole, full gospel, the real truth. It is not a faith alone. Faith that is alone is going to perish. You must believe in Jesus, and as a result of that belief, you must obey him. Everyone knows this that preaches faith alone because they'll teach faith alone, but then they'll say, well, after you believed in Jesus, we need to baptize you. Well, that's a work. So they affirm the fact that works must follow faith, even though they're teaching wrongly. So see what the word says. You are, you receive grace by faith, but it's never alone. It is always accompanied. It is always followed by the good works that God has commanded of you. Romans 16, 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice that the whole gospel, everything that's been revealed, everything, the prophetic writings, the commandments, Jesus' gospel, the stories, all of it, it's to call us to the obedience that comes from faith. We trust in God and then we obey him. All of humanity descended into sin because Eve and Adam stopped trusting God. God said, don't eat this fruit, it will kill you. Satan came, the serpent came and said, it won't kill you. You won't die. Eve trusted the serpent instead of God. Then she saw the food and thought, mm, that looks delicious. And so she took and ate and she shared it with Adam. And Adam didn't lead her as a husband ought. And he just participated with it. And then he fell as well. And so humanity descended into sin not because somebody ate a fruit. Everybody goes, oh, it's because they sinned. They ate the fruit. Yes, but... The first and the grave sin was that they stopped having faith in God and what he said. Why do you think Jesus says 
that the whole key is to have faith in him because everything messed up when we stopped having faith in him. See, Eve ate the fruit because she stopped having faith in what God said. The sin follows the lack of faith. This is why God calls you to faith first. You must trust him again or you will never be free from sin. You must trust that Jesus has saved you and forgiven you, that he is Lord, and you must trust his commandments. And then you will no longer eat the fruit, but you will instead do the things that God has commanded. Faith first. Here's the proof in scripture. James chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. This is the only time faith alone is ever mentioned in scripture, by the way. In the NIV, if you search faith alone, you will only pull up James 2.24. And that's because faith is never, ever alone. And that's a terrible phrase. It started at the Protestant Reformation, and it ends here. There's no more faith alone. It is faith first, followed by obedience. Notice what James says. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Another way to say that it would be faith without the obedience that comes from faith is dead. If you don't have obedience that follows your faith, your faith is dead and cannot save you. If you're still having a hard time receiving this, please receive the very words of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord himself. You must receive from him. He is not your Lord if when you read what he says, you don't actually trust it. You must trust what he says here. John 14, 15 through 24. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Now, why in one place would Jesus say, well, you got to believe in me. That's how you're saved. And yet here he's saying, the person who obeys me is the one who loves me and is in relationship with me. And the one who doesn't obey me doesn't love me and isn't in relationship with me. Well, pure and simple. Real faith will always result in obeying Jesus. It will always result in it. Now, you might be growing in your obedience as your faith grows, but the faith that believes that Jesus is saved and is Lord will always result in obeying Jesus as your Lord. Let me ask you a question, just logically. How can you call him Lord and not obey him? A Lord, the title itself, is someone to be obeyed. They are your master. So if Jesus is your Lord, it is implicit that you obey him. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. So you must obey Jesus as a believer. You are saved by faith, but faith will always result in doing what Jesus says. You're saved like the thief on the cross. You're saved because you've believed from the heart. But like all those who didn't die on the cross like the thief did right there next to Jesus, they were then baptized, which was an act of obedience, and then they began to live in more and more obedience. That's what faith produces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're almost done. Love you guys. <clears throat> Luke 6, 46 through 49. 
Jesus is speaking again. Yeshua HaMashiach says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Folks, I want you to understand, Jesus is saying that exact question, asking you and I tonight, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? See, he's not our Lord if we don't do what he says. Verse 47, as for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Some of you have believed that Jesus is your savior, but you're not believing him in other areas. And it's why your life is still looking like this big destruction. You're not going to receive the promises that God has offered until you're actually obeying him. Okay, this is so important. You believe that Jesus is Lord and salvation comes, but obedience follows. You must read the word of God and know the will of God through the word of God and then do the will of God that is commanded of you. And listen, it will actually be a delight. When you trust God, obeying him is a delight. It's not a burden. If it's a burden right now, it's because you're not trusting him. If you will trust in him, the commands become not a burden. They're no longer a burden. They're not a heavy yoke any longer. It's lightened by the fact that you've been forgiven of everything. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah.